I think the biggest issue I tend to find when it comes to medical applicants doing their application, it's around work experience. And firstly, it's they don't really know what work experience is and what it constitutes of. They tend to have misconceptions of having loads of work experience and that being essential to get into medical school. And finally, if they are in the position of doing work experience, they probably haven't reflected on it well enough and get down to their personal statement and interviews and have no idea what to say. So in today's video, we're going to talk through how to avoid the common mistakes, how to secure the right kind of work experience and what to do when you have it. But firstly, let's start off with why work experience is important for your application. You really need to show that you have an insight into what life can be like as a doctor. Many times when you go to interview, you'll be asked to draw upon the realities of medicine and practicing as a doctor. And what you tend to find is that many people think that it's a glamorous career where you're almost like the knight in shining armor. But in reality, when you go onto the wards and you go and see doctors in various different practices, you actually find that there is both a good aspect to being a doctor, a rewarding aspect, but there are also the parts that come with the job that you need to be aware of before you enter. And work experience really allows you to show that either through your personal statement or eventually into those interviews. So work experience, as I'm sure you're aware, people think it's, it's a very vague term, essentially. It can either mean a bit of what I described earlier, so the shadowing aspect, but what some people don't really understand is that it can be broken down into different parts. The first being shadowing experience, where you shadow a doctor. The second being volunteering, where you actively volunteer your time to you know, give back to your community or to you know, volunteer your time maybe in working for something that you enjoy. So maybe if you like football, you can volunteer at your local football club. And finally, the one that most people aren't really aware of, but is really important for a medical school application is paid work, where it's not you attending just because you have the time or it's not you just shadowing. It's actually you having a responsibility and being paid for the time that you work there. And that shows quite a different dynamic to, the volunt to volunteering and shadowing. So we'll discuss all three of those in turn and we'll talk about ways in which you can actually apply and secure these work experience. And we'll also touch on how you can reflect about these work experiences when it comes to writing your personal statement or when you get to the interview as well. So volunteering, for example, is a form of work experience where you give up your time to care for people in your community or for a cause that you really feel passionate about. It's not a paid experience and it really shows that you are able to give up your time and help those in need. So let's talk a bit more about shadowing experience. So shadowing experience is the aspect where you're actually viewing a healthcare professional, doctor or a dentist, in their practice and in their day-to-day. -day. And it's called shadowing because really you're not getting involved in any of the procedures. In fact, you probably couldn't get involved, but you're watching the doctor do their daily job and at the same time, you're observing and making note of the key actions that they take on a day-to-day -day basis, which can inform you of the role that they have. So for example, one of the good things that you should be doing when you shadow is really making notes of what that doctor is doing. And then when the patient leaves the room, asking the doctor or dentist further questions about that. Shadowing can take place in a GP environment, so a general practice, where it's the primary care, it's the first point of call for a patient. Um, and usually patients go there to, to present for an illness that they may have and the doctor there is really versatile and has a really good knowledge of various various different um, diseases and you really get to see a wide range and it's in the community. Other aspects of um, shadowing can involve being in a hospital where you may be on ward rounds where doctors are going around to see patients on a day-to-day -day basis and are also providing you know, quick examinations and consultations with, with these patients as well. You may also have the opportunity to shadow in a surgical theatre where you're really observing the surgeons doing practical procedures and also get the chance to see the communication between the different teams that operate inside that environment. I think the big mistake that comes with work experience is many people think that shadowing is purely work experience and this simply isn't the case. Work experience, as I said earlier, can be translated into other aspects, but really when it comes to shadowing, it can be the one that people find is the hardest to acquire. That's why I also say it's good to get virtual work experience, where you can have that organized journey of going through each aspect of maybe a patient consultation in GP, or hearing the perspectives from surgeons on how they deal with the high working hours and the stress that can come with the role. When it comes to acquiring shadowing work experience, we'll talk about this more, but it really just involves being very um, persistent, but also having that perseverance. Another question that we tend to get from loads of you guys in the comments is, how do I actually secure this work experience or how do I secure shadowing in particular? And honestly, it's a really difficult process for some, of, for some, especially because hospitals and general practices can find it hard to accommodate you because of the busy 
you know, runnings of those day to day practices. But really, in order to secure that shadowing experience, it, it really depends on you. So that really starts off with introducing yourself via email, sending a clear email to say that you're, you know, this is your educational background, you're interested in, you know, medicine, and you really love to gain um, an experience of what it's like to be a doctor. One thing I also recommend is perhaps not in the same way of going straight to being like, I want to shadow the doctor, but saying that you'd want to get an aspect of what it's like to be in that general practice as a whole. So one thing that I did when I applied is I actually sent an email to loads of general practices and said, I'd like to, you know, just observe the, the reception team and the administration team. And what that meant was I was able to really understand the total aspect of general practice. And then from that, I was able to, you know, shadow doctors because they had a bit of time on their hands. So I always use that as a way of advising students that actually don't always try to go straight to the doctor. In fact, sometimes it may be beneficial for you to gain a total view of that healthcare practice. So I always say shadow as many different multidisciplinary team members as you can, and you really get that wider perspective of what it's like to practice as a doctor. So now let's talk about how to utilize these work experiences and how to make sure that you are reflecting on them well. So a key problem that people run into is they've secured all the shadowing experience, they've got their volunteering, they're working a regular job and they're getting paid, but when it comes to sitting down, they have no idea what to say. And that can be a really frustrating situation to be in. So what I always recommend is you, whenever you do your experiences, you keep a diary. It could be on your phone, it could be a small notebook, and you're just simply writing down all the things that you're doing throughout the day. And what that means is when you come to sit down and write your personal statement or prepare for your interviews, you have a bank of experiences to reflect on and draw upon. And I always like to say that whenever you reflect, think about how it made you feel. So if you were in a consultation with a doctor and that doctor was speaking to a patient, how did that consultation make you feel? Did you really feel like you, know, you were comfortable? Did the doctor have, the, were they using the right skills? Were they able to build rapport? Because these are all key themes you wanna talk about in your personal statement. When they ask you about work experience, they want to know the insights that you got from it, not what you did day to day. The real thing they're looking for is what you actually got from that experience. So anytime you have a role or you see something at your job, think about it and write it down because it will really help you when it comes to bringing those into your personal statements and also in your interview. Another question we always get is how much? And I always say, it's always about the quality of your experiences, but there is an element of quantity. I, another question that I always get is about the requirements of how much work experience do I need to do at Awale? Is it a case of doing 100 hours? And I firstly always say quality is better than quantity. Having maybe one or two days in a general practice where you were able to learn so much is going to help you when you're writing about those experiences and you can talk a lot more about it. But there is an argument that you do need to have a variety of experiences and if you were looking to track, which some medical schools do, you can actually use the Warwick Medical School benchmark for when it comes to thinking about the right amount of variety of work experience that you can get. And if you wanted to also put a time aspect to it, those Warwick benchmarks are really good. You know, Warwick is really known for having a rigorous work experience criteria. They're a grad-only medical school and they really have set st high standards for students who want to come to the medical school. They, they pride themselves in selecting candidates who have had a variety of different experiences and are able to reflect on those in different ways. And by meeting those requirements, you actually tend to be in a good position for if not all medical schools. So I always say use that as a benchmark and work towards it. But at the same time, don't feel too disheartened if you aren't getting those 70 or 100 hours. Really, it's about how well you reflect on those experiences. And I wanted to touch on something in relation to work experience that I think is really important to consider. And that firstly begins with generally, Gaining work experience is about giving you the right amount of almost ammunition to talk about in your personal statement and in your interviews. And you really wanna do as much as you can so that you can have that quantity to speak about. So you never really wanna embellish or kind of white lie about the experiences you had because if you are to be caught out and if there are those inconsistencies in your explanation, interviewers will catch that out, people who read personal statements will catch that out and you almost have a 100% chance of being rejected. So it's always about being honest, first of all, with the experiences you've had, because once again, universities appreciate that, but they're also mindful that it can be difficult to secure things like shadowing. And you also wanna be able to speak about things in a way that there is enough of you to, there is enough for you to say, as opposed to being like, oh, I did X amount, and that's not really reflected in all your other explanations. So keep it really simple and 
Don't try to, you know, add on top things that aren't true. So remember, work experience is not just about ticking a box. We all know it's an essential part of a medical school application, but really make the most of it because it's going to be very important when it comes to writing your personal statement and when you get to the, the interview stage, talking about your experiences. If you want to know more about work experience and how to secure it, check out this video here, which outlines a step-by-step -step process of how to secure work experience. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and best of luck with securing any work experience. If you have any other questions that come up from this video, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll see you in one of our next videos. Thank you.